So, let's look at this case. This is your case. This is the model that you have in front of you. And when you look at this, the, the chief complaint of this guy was, I'm afraid that my front teeth are going to break, specifically this lateral. And if you looked at the model, if you look at this model, that's number 10, you can't put a crown on that tooth. If you think you can, show me the case six months later. If you prep that tooth, biomechanically, you've compromised the tooth. Right? Biomechanically. The aesthetics, you might have done okay, but biomechanically, it's compromised. So, he says to me, I only want to fix my front teeth. I'm only, I, I don't care about the back ones. I got some wear, a little bit of wear. But if you look at his bite, and if we play crime scene investigator, <clears throat> what caused the wear? Do you think that's tooth to tooth grinding? I don't think so. If it was tooth to tooth grinding, would the teeth be thin like that? No, they'd be more like the case that I showed you here, the attrition. So you can rule out attrition. Now, can you have some tooth to tooth grinding along with erosion? Yes. You can have a combination. And so when I look at this case, these teeth may have super erupted as they've worn. You can see where the gingiva is here. These may have dental at alveolar extrusion. Could I, I could have done the anterior teeth and not the back teeth if he let me do one thing. Intrude them. He was 59. He didn't want to go through ortho and he was concerned about But even if you intrude them, you haven't solved the problem of possible fracture of that tooth. So if you have to do restorative on that anyway, is ortho going to help you that much? The time I do ortho is if, it, if I can use ortho to do minimally invasive dentistry, I'm going to do ortho. But with this guy, deep bite. Look at the wear that he has in these abfractive lesions. That could be erosion. You see wear everywhere. Now, this would be difficult to cover with a graft, you know, because it's impinging on the enamel. It was only the roots. Now, could you cover some of this? Yes. A lot of times what I'll do is I will will, will actually restore a glass on them where I put a CEJ where I want the CEJ and then I say cover the root and I'll leave you know that exposed you know what I mean so you you keep the restoration up about a little bit you make like a CEJ and then they actually cover the root um, so when you look at a ladder you can see those teeth are a little bit retroclined they're kind of lingual back and what Quace talks about, he, he also talks about where he talks about friction, the friction of the teeth, because when he's chewing, it's difficult to get the, 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 the lower teeth behind the front teeth. And what happens is a lot of times these patients that have chips on their front teeth, it's not coming from behind, it's coming from the outside in. And when they chew, they're coming like this. And what are they doing? They're scuffing the edges of those anteriors. And what happens is, if you put composite in the way of their chewing pattern, what happens to the composite? It snaps off, it breaks. So I want to make sure I know their chewing pattern. And when we do this, you'll see how this works. So you can see that there's a step in the occlusal plane from here to here. That actually gives us an advantage of maybe having to do less teeth. Because when do I determine when I'm going to do all the back teeth on the upper and all the back teeth on the lower? Is aesthetics. If I look at the patient, and I have them say M, M, M. I want to see how much tooth is showing. Patients who are edentulous and you make them a denture, if they can't talk, they're not going to be able to talk. They don't adjust to the shik shik shik, mesh shippy, just because they've had them for a while. You gotta have the teeth in the right spot in order to have a, have a good result, aesthetically and clinically for the outcome. Back teeth on the bottom, together. A little bit on each arch. But, because these are hanging down, these are down further, I might be able to just raise the bottom ones to open the bite. Because, when you look at this, when he goes canine guides, you can see he's getting lift off of the teeth. He's not in group function here. And when you look at it, there it is from the lingual. So you may say, wow, this is really difficult. This is a hard case. 
At first, when I looked at it, I thought, oh, that's hard, but because it doesn't have a grinding component to it, all I have to do is restore the T and let him know that, hey, he says, how long is it going to last? I hope to get six to seven years out of it minimum. But what restorative material are you going to use? Are you going to crown them? Are you going to use porcelain? Are you going to use composite? Are you going to do it direct? Are you going to do it indirect? There's, there's a number of ways to roof a house. If you took Corky Wilhite's transitional bonding course, his is, his, he does it direct. Remember when I said to you, what dictates the vertical dimension? Aesthetics and restorative material. And when you look at it, here's what we did. He ended up losing a second molar and a third molar. How did he lose it? He had a detigerous cyst. So this had to be extracted, that one had to be extracted. Okay, here's the bite wing. Good bone support, no major issues except that detigerous cyst. And so when you look at the models, that looks scary. But in reality, it's not that scary because What's going to determine how much I open the bite would be doing a wax up. And so what we do is we did a wax up. Would you say if I'm putting back what the patient is missing, that's reasonable? That's not unreasonable. I'm just I'm putting back what he had. So now all of a sudden, if it's mounted like this and I add the wax, it hits the wax, what am I going to do to the back teeth? Add wax. Which arch am I going to do it on? You, you could do it on both, or you could do it on one. It doesn't. You have to look at the aesthetics. But when you look at your model and you say, "Whoa, I can ink, I can just do this one to open the bite," I may get lucky. But I, what I don't want is this. I don't want to have this and then a big step in one arch. You know what I mean? You have to. The wax up is going to determine which arch you can do. You may have to do both. You may have to do one. Here, if I add just tops to the T, that's going to be how much did I open them up? I added wax to the back, and then I added wax, I mean to the back of the T, then I added the back T until I don't touch, I can pull shim stock out of the front. So it's all determined by restorative material in this situation. Because I'm not increasing the teeth, because you saw in his smile, did you see how much teeth he showed? And when he smiled, he showed a lot of teeth, they were hanging down quite a bit. And so I'm not going to change that incisal edge. But from this wax up, this is what's going to be my blueprint. And I tell patients, in order for me to do this case, I need to have a blueprint in order to restore it. Yes? So what do you do instead then? Like what? a decay or? Yeah, you know what I'll do? I definitely want to do caries prevention. I want to caries control. I tell patients, in the minimally, we're going to try to protect your teeth with splint. You're going to have to wear a splint because maybe you've worn this out. Or you may have to wear fluoride trays at night. And I want to try to keep what you have from getting worse. Now you have to decide, could you do porcelain overlays on these teeth? Sure. Could you do porcelain crowns? Sure. Could you do composite? Sure. I'm not here to tell you what restorative material. If, if it was the longest term and the patient had the money, I would say Emacs pressable ceramics would probably be the best. Longest lasting. Bonded to enamel. The easiest, easiest to repair is composite. And when you look at this case, here's what we did. We made an impression of his teeth. Okay? Today, I want you to pretend these pre-ops are not models. This is the patient coming to your office. Okay? Hi, patient. How you doing? Boom, boom, boom. And now we have to make an impression of his teeth. So we make an impression. And then we're going to use a silicone dye to pour up a model. Remember, polyether is the material you have to use for the impression or alginate. Alginate or polyether, because when you inject silicone, if it's a PVS, most of us use PVSs, if you inject that in the PVS, it will stick won't come out. So today, you're going to make an impression like it's your patient. You're going to pour up a model. You're going to end up with a model like what you have. We haven't, poured, we haven't passed this out yet. 
It'll be a silicone one like this. This is silicone. We're going to take our composite. We heat up composite. Okay. On the lower, I used Renamel Hybrid. You'll see how we how we used it. We used different materials on these things. And what I'm doing is I'm forming the lingual. Okay. And I put the composite on, and then from the wax up, from that wax up, I made a clear PVS. I push that over the top. Form it, light cure it, and then I put it in a triad unit like this. So today, you're going to have um, a, an impression of the wax up, and you're going to superimpose it. We're going to make these overlays on, in, in, on, the, on the models. Okay, Finishing it, polishing it, and here, do you notice the step from the cuspid? So this clear, this is RSVP clear. I helped develop this product with Bob Nixon. We get royalties for it. But the reason why it was developed was we wanted to make something stiff that wouldn't flex. You always have to have a stop on the distal and one on the mesial. Because when you make these overlays, you have to be able to hold it tight. You don't want to push it down in the middle because that overlay is going to be too low. So we heat our composite up. I heated the composite here, and then I took the hybrid, put it over the top, and then we pushed it over. Okay? So now I and I light cure through it. So now I have four overlays. So today we're gonna make overlays. So that's a steep transition or actually, what is it? Actually this was gonna be transitional, but I did the case in 2007. Published it in 2009. Now it's going on 10 years of composite, and I have not restored anything else. So was it when I told the guy, I said I don't know how long it's going to last. I think it's semi-permanent. If I had gone with Emacs and the patient had the money, the fee that I charged him was my normal like onlay fee minus a lab bill because I made it myself. I saved him money because he didn't have a lot of money to do it. If money was no object, I probably would have prepared the teeth just a little margin and done an Emacs overlay. It's going to be the longest lasting. But you'll see how this goes as we as we go along. Okay? So we get done, this is what it looks like. Alright? So now when he bites, I've got to equilibrate him. Because here's what it looks like. What I did here was, and, and this is just a trick I learned at the Koi Center, was when I, when I put all those restorations on and he bites, it may not be an even bite. And instead of doing centric relation, putting my hand on the jaw, putting the paper, I put a little composite on the front teeth here, and I make a little platform. So I let him tap on the platform for 10, 15 minutes before I even adjust the bite. Tap, tap, so that I allow, the, because there's no teeth cut contacting in the back, it allows the lateral pterygoids to, to relax and seat the condo. Why do we have popping and clicking? Because the lateral pterygoids pulling forward, so when you go like pop, click, it's going on and off because the lateral pterygoids pulling that disc forward. So if I can calm down the muscle, I can still use a coiste part or a leaf gauge, and I start grinding away this platform. When I start grinding away the platform slowly, I have the patient touch until the tooth touches. And then I'll start equilibrating the patient. All right. So that's basically you doing the coise. I'm doing a, yeah, I'm doing a coise equilibration. So here we have stop, 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 stop. And you and the patient, you say, well, how long is it going to last? I don't know how long it's going to last. I, I tell the patient, everybody's different. My goal for you is to what? Prevent a catastrophic failure because. If number 10 breaks off at the gum, you need an implant. My goal is to have the restoration break and repair the restoration. And I tell them, I said, I don't know how long it's left. I expect 7 to 10 years out of it, but I don't know. Everybody's different. What depends on the food you eat, depends on how you treat your teeth. So here's what the lingual looks like at 6 years. And all you see is this. I saw some wear here, a little bit of wear around the edges. But overall, the hybrid held up good. 
And now it's nine years old. I don't care if he breaks every one of them. Pay for them again. Honestly, because I'm here to protect your teeth. I buy homeowner's insurance. I hope I never use it. But I'm still paying for it. And I tell the people, when he comes in, says, how long is it going to last? I don't know. How can you give him a guarantee? Now, if he's a good patient and it breaks in four or five years, you might want to redo it. Maybe you do it at half the lab fee. I don't know. Whatever you want to do it for. But my goal was to prevent him from having a catastrophic failure. All right? So we're going to do this exercise now. Okay? We'll take a little bit of a break, maybe just a 10 minute go to the bathroom, whatever you want. When you come back, I'm going to have everything ready. You're going to be making, this is your patient. It's not a model. You're going to make an impression of it, and we're going to fabricate our silicone dyes. Okay? Then we're going to fabricate our RSVP clear overlay, and then we're going to fabricate the restorations.